Firstly, I want to thank Ryan Moore, Asian 83, for recommending this case. But also, I want to thank my viewers, and particularly my channel members, for their constant support. Their names are on the screen. Anyway, on with the video. At 12.49am on the 15th of January 2018, the following call was made to 999. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? No. They're not breathing? No. Okay. And who was it we're talking about? Um, Lexi, she's three. She's three? Bear with yeah. me. Okay. So, she's unconscious and she's not breathing. So help has been arranged, okay. The woman making this call, 21-year-old Louise Porton, had just murdered her three-year-old daughter Lexi after two previous failed attempts which left her fighting for her life. Porton had smothered Lexi and waited hours to make sure she was dead before calling for an ambulance. Just 18 days later, Porton made another phone call for help as her 17-month-old daughter Scarlett had stopped breathing. Paramedics found that this child too had been dead for some time before help was called, with Porton having smothered her hours before. Porton is an evil, self-obsessed woman, utterly without conscience and remorse, who, whilst Lexi was fighting for her life during an unsuccessful attempt to kill her, was in the hospital toilet, sending topless photos of herself to men, and, when this child died, she was heard laughing at the funeral home. She also begged men for money to drive Scarlet to the hospital, knowing she was already dead. Her crimes, callousness, and likely motivation for murdering her own children is truly sickening, and I have no doubt will appall you. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Louise Porton was born in 1996 and raised in the market town of Walsall in the county of Warwickshire in the West Midlands of the UK. Despite apparently coming from a close family, Porton soon developed into a selfish, vindictive, violent and narcissistic child. Those close to Porton later testified in court that the family was close-knit but she was always an outsider and this was through choice. When the family would visit Porton's grandmother, Joy, she would sit with a scowl on her face in the corner, alone, whilst everyone else enjoyed their time together. If anyone sat near her, she would say, quote, Go away or I'll smash your face. Porton would also be very vindictive. She would dig her nails into her cousin's skin when no one was looking, causing them to cry, and then she would deny all knowledge of this happening. She was reported to have never apologised for anything she did. When she was around 11 years old, Joy began noticing that every time that Porton would come round, items and money would go missing. It was clear that Porton was stealing from her grandmother. When challenged on this, Porton would use emotional manipulation to get her own way, telling her grandmother that if she accused her of stealing, then she'd never come round again. So Joy would continue to let her come round, not wanting to lose connection with her family, and things would continue to go missing. From an early age, it was clear that Porton was obsessed with money and owning things. She was incredibly materialistic. Her abusive behaviour towards her family meant she was basically cut off from them, something she seemed to be indifferent about. The final straw came in 2016, when Porton was aged around 20, and when Joy became seriously ill and had to be admitted to hospital, it became clear quickly that she was not going to recover. One of her cousins later recalled, quote, When Nan was in hospital, she was the only one who wouldn't come. I contacted Louise and told her they'd given Nan less than 24 hours, but she said, I can't make it. I told her it was the last chance. She said, I heard what you said, but I'm not coming. I just put the phone down. I was so emotional. After this point, the family cut her off. Porton herself appears to have been abandoned by her mother, Sharon Porton, which was around 11 years old, with her leaving the family home to begin another relationship, leaving their father to raise her and her two siblings. This understandably devastated Porton, and she didn't speak to her mother for a number of years, and this separation likely led to a deterioration of her own, already concerning behaviour, which was entirely self-centred, with her quickly defining herself by money she stole and items she bought with her ill-gotten gains. Porton did reconnect with her mother Sharon when she reached adulthood, but the damage was likely already done by this point. While still a teenager, Porton became extremely promiscuous. She's reported to have had sex with anyone who would show her attention. Porton quickly realised that she could use this behaviour to make money for herself, 
and so would specifically seek out men with means, who, in exchange for sex, would give her cash, or buy designer clothes, or shoes, or handbags, etc. By the age of 18 years old, she was signed up with various dating sites, offering sexual services for money, and she would regularly go on Facebook to brag about how much money she was making from sex work, showing defiance of anyone who would call her out for her behaviour, claiming they were just jealous of how easily she could make money. Porton had, it would appear, some relationships that didn't revolve around payment, and this included one with a man called Chris Draper. However, Porton was abusive within the relationship, deliberately bragging to Chris about the men she was sleeping with and the amount of money she was making. She seemed to get off on making others feel small. This union, such as it was, produced two beautiful children, both girls, Lexi Draper, who was born in 2014, and Scarlett Vaughan, who entered the world in 2016. Chris was estranged from his daughters at the time of their deaths in 2018. This was apparently due to Porton, as, in an act of complete malice, when she was pregnant with Scarlett, she moved to Rugby, a town 40 miles away, and forbid Chris from seeing Lexi. He was not there at the birth of Scarlett, and was forbidden from seeing her, and could only see pictures of her online. Tragically, he never met her before she died. Porter would emotionally abuse Chris online, claiming that neither child was his. However, Porton didn't care about the children. They were merely props, a thing to use to get what she wanted. She took them away from Chris to hurt him. This was all about what she wanted. This is shown in her caring for the children, and I use that term loosely. Porton would spend hours on internet dating sites, including Meet Me and Badoo, offering her services for as little as £30 while she was meant to be looking after the children, and messages recovered after her arrest show that she was bringing men back to the property where she lived. Her and her children shared a bedroom, but this didn't stop her, as she messaged one client saying they could still have sex in the room as long as they were quiet so as not to wake the children. On another occasion, Porton went outside to have sex with a man in a van while the children were sleeping. She was also on various websites referring to herself as a quote, model, including appearing under the name Lollipop on the website Purpleport. In court, her landlady, Leanne Bradley, said it was, quote, rare for Porton to look after the children, and she would often be asked to look after them when she was out to meet men. It got to the point where they were spending more time being looked after by Leanne than by their mother. When she was around, Porton was abusive to the children, and Leanne recalled in court, quote, they would cry and not always do what she asked them to do. She would tell them to shut the fuck up, or she would give them something to cry for. Porter would also sometimes leave the children with her mother, Sharon Porton. It seemed that she would only reach out to family when she wanted something. At their post-mortem, the children were found to have injuries to their bodies, suggesting that Porton had beaten them before their deaths. Porton would moan to everyone that she was a single mother, struggling to make ends meet and living in poverty. However, she was obsessed with posting pictures of her lifestyle, including shopping trips and various outfits she was buying. Clearly, every penny that she got was used on herself. She had long-term arrangements with some of the men she had sex with, and when she would snap her fingers, they would send money to her account to fund her shopping trips or pay for her petrol, etc. One of the messages recovered after her arrest showed her asking for money for pictures, with her saying, quote, Tell me how much you put in, and I will do pictures. If you put in enough, we can meet up and I will fuck you. Before discussing the horrific sequence of events that came next, I want to point out a few things. First and foremost is the extreme narcissism of Louise Porton. I've rarely seen a case with someone so fixated on themselves with no consideration for anyone else. Even people I've met who have been deeply self-centred have a small glimmer of consideration for other people. If a family member was dying, even they would know that they should be there in person. However, if something didn't benefit Porton, then she wasn't interested. Her grandmother, a woman who had apparently been a consistent part of her life, was dying. But, who cares? Can't be bothered. All Porton was interested in was money. Secondly is her utter vindictiveness, bordering, in my opinion, on sadism. She was, from a young age, someone who enjoyed causing harm to others, seeing them in distress. Later, she deliberately stopped a man from seeing his own children, purely, I think, to cause him pain. She even claimed that he wasn't the father, 
an act of pure spite. Likely, this also explains the reason she didn't see her grandmother before she died. She wanted her to be upset that family member didn't come to see her. Porton wanted her to suffer. Lastly, it's Porton's complete lack of remorse at any stage of her life. She didn't feel bad about harming her cousins as a child or stealing from her grandmother. She didn't feel anything when she died and thought nothing of ripping a man away from his children or depriving them of a father. It was widely reported later that Porton killed her children as they got in the way of her sex life, but this seems to have stuck as it's the angle the prosecution played. But, as I'll come back to later, this was not accepted by the judge and it's not actually what the evidence shows. The reason why Porton did what she did, in my opinion, was far, far more complex and much more sinister. And I'll highlight this as we go along and I'm confident that, by the end, you'll agree this woman is pure evil. By January 2018, Louise Paulson had decided to kill her children and she began with three-year-old Lexi. Before finally ending her life, Porton tried to kill her on at least two occasions. On the 2nd of January 2018, the call was made to 999 by Porton, saying that Lexi was experiencing breathing difficulties. Paramedics rushed to the property and found Lexi unconscious. She was soon revived and taken to hospital, arriving there at around 1am. Text messages show that, during the ride to the hospital and whilst her daughter was being treated, Porton was sending messages to someone about a quote, happy ending, and at 1.18am she was arranging a meeting with a man and telling him he needed to pay cash up front. At around 6am, Lexi was discharged from hospital. In the early hours of the 4th of January 2018, another call was made to 999 by Porton, who said that Lexi was again struggling to breathe. Paramedics rushed to the property again and found Lexi unconscious, lying on her back on the floor. A paramedic who attended said in court that her condition was critical and that Lexi was suffering from severe breathing difficulties. She was stabilised at the scene and rushed to the hospital. Without this intervention, Lexi would have died. The paramedic said that Porton was, quote, not distressed at all in the back of the ambulance and he stated he believed that she was drinking wine from a glass when he first attended. Whilst Lexi was fighting for her life in hospital, Porter was in the toilet, taking selfies of her breasts to send to people she was arranging to meet for sex. She acted the concerned mother to various men she messaged, and to at least one, she said, quote, really need funds to help me get by. And this, here, is in my opinion the primary motivation for why Porter did what she did, money. As it will be shown moving forward, any time she could use a tragedy to turn a profit, she would. Tragically, it wouldn't be determined until after her death that Lexi had been strangled by Porton, resulting in her almost dying on two occasions. It seems that Lexi was only in hospital until late on the 4th of January or the 5th of January 2018, and during this time, Porton was making various searches, including, quote, can you actually die if you have a blocked nose and cover your mouth with tape, and how long after drowning can someone be resuscitated? She was also reading articles about children who had been brought back to life after drowning. On the 6th of January 2018, rather than looking after her daughter, who had just come out of hospital, Porton was offering her sexual services to a man for the entire day for £300. Louise Porton had decided to finally kill Lexi on the 14th of January 2018, and, the day before, made further harrowing online searches, including, quote, how long does it take for a dead body to go cold up to the shoulder? She also sent a message to a man, saying that a doctor had said that Lexi had flu and would soon pass away. This was clearly a lie. This harrowing CCTV footage shows Lexi entering the family home for the last time, being followed by her sister. Just a few hours later, Porter would suffocate Lexi by placing either a hand or some other object over her nose and mouth. Porton then waited hours to make sure Lexi was dead and there was no chance of her being revived. Only then did she make the 999 call I played at the beginning of the video, which was made at 12.49am on the 15th of January 2018. Paramedics again returned to the same address they'd been to twice before in the last two weeks, but this time there was no saving Lexi. She was pronounced dead at the scene. 
paramedics were concerned as Lexi had clearly been dead for hours and they were not convinced by Porton's claims that she'd found her daughter lifeless in bed and called an ambulance straight away. Again, Porton showed no emotion and didn't shed a tear at the death of her daughter. The next day, Porton was back online arranging sex with men. On screen, a conversation recovered from this day, the 16th of January 2018. And as you can see, she describes herself as a model, but says she's taking a break because, quote, my little girl passed away yesterday. However, within an hour and a half, Porton is talking to another man called Leon, arranging a, quote, date. Porton couldn't even pretend to care. And, a few days later, was seen laughing at her funeral directors and yawning when discussing the arrangements for Lexi. She also sent a message to a friend, making a joke that she'd gone from two children to just one. On January the 19th, 2018, post-mortem examination was conducted on Lexi, but a cause of death couldn't be determined. It was concluded that her death wasn't natural and was unexplained, but at the time, not suspicious. Various samples were sent away for analysis. Unfortunately, the results of these tests would not be returned in time, as, just 18 days later, Louise Porton killed for the second time. This time, she ended the life of her 17-month-old daughter, Scarlett. On the 1st of February 2018, Louise Porton and Scarlett were staying in a hotel, I believe due to some issue with their own property. CCTV footage from 6.55pm shows Porton carrying Scarlett up to the hotel room, where, likely within minutes, she was suffocated by her own mother, in the same way Lexi had been murdered. There's no doubt that, by around 7.30pm, Scarlett was dead. Porton again sat with her daughter's body to make sure she was dead. She didn't call for help. Her utter callousness was shown by messages sent during this time. As shown on screen, note that she describes Scarlett as being, quote, not well, and at 9.22pm, she begins messaging a guy saying, quote, any chance of putting 30 in my bank now for fuel to get my daughter Scarlett to the hospital, I'll transfer it back Wednesday. So, with her daughter already dead, Porton is trying to get money. I have no words for this woman, I really don't. Finally, confident that her daughter was dead, at around 10pm, Porton strapped Scarlett in a car seat and was seen driving. 15 minutes later, she stops at a petrol station to fill up her vehicle, apparently without a care in the world. At this point, she's standing mere feet away from her dead daughter, who is strapped into the car seat. You would think that Porton was driving to the hospital. No. Soon after filling up her car, she pulled over and dialed 111, the non-emergency medical advice line in the UK, and said that Scarlett had become unwell when they were driving, and then she stopped breathing. Porton then returned to the hotel, unstrapped her daughter from the car seat, and returned her to the room where she'd been murdered. Paramedics arrived at around 11pm, and it was clear there was nothing that could be done for Scarlett. She was freezing cold, and her body was stiff indicating that she'd been dead for hours. So, by the age of just 21, and within the space of 18 days, Louise Porton had murdered her two children. The deaths of two children, with no significant medical history, just 18 days apart, obviously raise alarm bells. And, on the 2nd of February 2018, a post-mortem was conducted on Scarlet and a further one completed on Lexi. Various tests were completed and samples taken and Warwickshire police were notified and a murder investigation was started. Unfortunately, a case like this takes time to compile and Porton will remain at liberty for almost a year before justice finally caught up with her. In the immediate aftermath, Porton showed absolutely no emotion in the days after losing her second child. She was described as going to an appointment with a housing officer on the 5th of February 2018 and being completely calm and emotionless. On March the 20th 2018, Louise Porton was arrested on suspicion of murdering Lexi and Scarlett and released under investigation. It's clear the police didn't have enough evidence to charge her, but I always think this is a shot across the bow, letting the perp know it's only a matter of time, hoping they'll crumble or make a mistake. However, Porton was unfazed and sickeningly in June 2018, 
she posted an ad on Facebook selling her dead children's clothes. I mean, look at this image. The clothes of her dead children have basically been stuffed into a bin bag and are also strewn all over the floor. I've no doubt this is a reflection of how she saw her own children and how she treated them. Paulson carried on doing what she'd been doing for years, arranging sex with men online, claiming to be a model, but also using the death of her own children to make a profit, including selling their clothes. On the 24th of November 2018, she uploaded this disgusting post as a tribute to the children she'd murdered, which reads, quote, Mummy's angels, take from me too soon. You will never be forgotten. R.I.P. However, whilst the police were slowly working behind the scenes to build a case, Porton had already been convicted in the court of public opinion. She was subjected to constant trolling, and her response was to post things like, quote, Fuck the haters. Initially in Porton's corner was her mother Sharon, who I think just didn't want to believe her daughter was capable of these things. But in March 2018, Sharon posted a message on Facebook saying that her daughter had punched her to the floor. Finally, in January 2019, enough evidence had been gathered to prove not only that Lexi and Scarlett had been suffocated to death by Porton, but she'd also tried to kill Lexi on two previous occasions. In addition, all of Porton's social media posts and messages had been catalogued. And, on January the 25th, 2019, Louise Porton was rearrested and charged with the murders of three-year-old Lexi Draper and 17-month-old Scarlett Vaughan, and she was remanded into custody to await her day in court. To no one's surprise, Louise Porton pleaded not guilty to all charges, and her trial started on the 3rd of July 2019, a Birmingham Crown Court. As I said at the beginning of the video, the prosecution framed this as Porton killing her children because they got in the way of her sex life. But over the 28 day trial, this wasn't the picture that was outlined. Although this claim stuck, it was shown that Porton carried on her sex life regardless of whether the children were there or not. There was no real change in her activity before the children were born or after they died. Porton gave evidence but simply denied any wrongdoing, stating that she loved her children and had no reason to kill them, but her cold demeanour didn't help her case. On the 31st of July 2019, the jury went out to deliberate and returned within 24 hours to deliver unanimous guilty verdicts to the charges of murdering Lexi and Scarlett. The next day, the 2nd of August 2019, Porton stood before Mrs Justice Yip for sentencing. She described Porton's actions as both, quote, evil and calculated. She stated, quote, These were blameless young children who were plainly vulnerable and ought to have been able to rely on their mother to protect and nurture them. Instead, you took their young lives away. She said there were no obvious signs of Porton suffering from any mental illness, but that, quote, It's plainly part of your makeup that you find it difficult to make and sustain emotional attachments and to put the needs of others ahead of your own. She then sentenced her. For the murders of Lexi Draper and Scarlett Vaughan, Louise Porton was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of 32 years before she can apply for parole. Porton showed no emotion during her sentencing. Aside from her current prison being publicised, HMP Foston Hall, a women's closed prison in the village of Foston in Derbyshire, little has been reported about Porton's time inside. I imagine she won't have an easy time of it. I'll have to grow up quickly in this environment. Lexi and Scarlett were finally laid to rest, together, on the 3rd of September 2019, with their tiny coffins being carried in a carriage drawn by four white horses, taking them on their final journey. Their funeral was organised by their father, Chris Draper, who said that he wanted to give them, quote, the send-off you deserved. I cannot imagine the pain this man endured, bearing both of his children, including one he'd never met. In a victim impact statement in court, Chris spoke about being suicidal after the death of his children. He said, quote, I am broken. I keep asking myself, why did Louise do something so evil to our beautiful daughters? He continued, quote, No punishment will ever be enough as I'll never get my daughters back. 
After the funeral, he wrote on Facebook, quote, Gave you the send-off you deserved. All eyes on you. And you'll be missed, but never forgotten. Sleep tight, babies. Daddy's got you. Daddy will always have your back. Sleep tight. Love your daddy. I hope with all sincerity that Lexi and Scarlett are safe, loved, and together for the rest of eternity. Rest in peace, little angels. The death of the children also devastated their grandmother, Sharon Porter, and, in a terrible postscript, she committed suicide on the 2nd of September 2020. Friends said she struggled to cope with the grief of losing her grandchildren, the guilt that she raised a monster and had not stopped her. It also appears that she was receiving a lot of abuse for the actions of her daughter. So, Louise Porton's behaviour, her evil, claimed the lives of, in my opinion, three people and irreparably destroyed the lives of many, many more. As I said, despite the prosecution claiming that Porton killed her children to continue sex working, the more I look into this case, the less I agree with this statement. Even if this was part of the rationale, I think it's a minor part, that she was happily going along, doing whatever she was doing, and simply palming the children off on others. Instead, I think that Porton's motivation was, at a very basic level, financial. She killed her children because of money, but it's much more complicated than that. Let's start from the beginning. There's not much about Porton's early life, but it's clear that something was seriously wrong with her from a young age. Whether she was born this way or developed into this is unclear, but it's apparent that she was extremely antisocial and enjoyed hurting people. Underneath her behaviour, I think was insecurity and extremely low self-esteem, with her using violence to make herself feel better about herself. Quickly, money became a way for her to feel good about herself. Money meant she could buy things, designer clothes, handbags, etc., to portray herself as successful, powerful, in order to hide from the damaged person she was. She began sleeping with anyone and everyone, and this is commonly an indicator of underlying issues with self-esteem, with people looking for validation, even briefly through sex, feeling wanted for that brief period of time, before having to confront how they actually feel about themselves. In order to avoid this, they keep having sex again and again and again, to avoid confronting their underlying issues. Porton realised she could combine the two things. Men would pay her for sex. Win-win. She'd get the validation she wanted, whilst also making money, which she could use to fund her lifestyle. And I think getting money to maintain this was her sole purpose in life. She needed money in order to keep the shaky foundations of her pretend life from collapsing. She couldn't stand to acknowledge the person she actually was, or let the world see a glimpse of the damaged little girl she was. She was also horrendously spiteful. Any opportunity she could to hurt someone, she would take. And, by harming them, she felt powerful, reveling in other people's misery. Again, I'm sure this was a way for her to offset her own feelings of inadequacy. And this last reason is why she took her two children away from their father. Out of spite, she wanted him to suffer by not being able to see the children. They were simply pawns to be used. I think she thought little more than achieving this objective. She didn't think... How am I going to raise these children? I think when this dawned on her, she realised she was completely incapable. In court, Porton admitted that she found parenting difficult. I think this was because she'd spent so many years being utterly self-absorbed that she had no ability to care for anyone but herself. If she was struggling, she could have contacted social services, or asked for help, or returned them to their father, or any number of things. But of course she didn't. That would make her look bad. Forget the fact it would help the children, it would mean that she'd have to admit fault. Her carefully crafted image would come crumbling down. So I firmly believe she resented the children, despite her putting them in that situation. They were at fault. They didn't benefit her in any way, and likely, she saw them as a drain on her resources. She was having to spend money on them, and devote time to raising them, which took focus away from the most important thing in the world to her, herself. I think Porton then realised that, with these objects, because that's how she saw them, out of the way, there'd be more money for her, and sickeningly, 
I have no doubt that she was going to use the death of her children to rinse people for everything they were worth. We saw examples of this, saying she was struggling to cope when Lexi was in hospital and needing money for petrol when taken to Scarlet's hospital and selling the children's clothes mere months after their death. The children's bodies were not released for burial until after Porton's arrest in 2019, but I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that if she'd been in charge of their funerals, she would have set up as many fundraising pages as she could and begged for money from everywhere. She would have then paid for the cheapest funeral possible whilst pocketing the rest of the money, which she could then spend to keep on living a life which enabled her to avoid actually looking into the deep, dark hole of nothingness inside of her. I think she only didn't do this because she knew the police were circling, and I have no doubt that, as part of her sex work, the issue of how she was struggling still with the death of her two children and how desperate she was for money must have come up. This profile, I think, is more accurate, and would suggest that Louise Porton is what is known as a malignant narcissist, which is a severe condition which combines the traits of several different personality disorders, including narcissism, antisocial behaviour, aggression, and sadism, meaning essentially this type of individual will abuse others without remorse and often take great pleasure in this behaviour in order to get their own way. In the case of Louise Porton, she was willing to smother her own children, something that would have taken minutes, just so that she could maintain her lifestyle and continue to avoid the terror of admitting who she really was to herself and others. Saying that she did these things as the children got in the way of her sex life is a dangerous oversimplification. Louise Porton is a woman who will target, victimise and kill anyone in order to get her own way. The chances of her being treated are, in my opinion, incredibly low. So, when she's released, I think she'll pose a serious danger to anyone who gets close to her. If she felt in the future that killing a child would help her make gain for herself, she would, without hesitation. But I think by the time she's released, which will be when she's in her 50s at the earliest, she would potentially change her MO. I can imagine her slithering herself into the lives of wealthy men and finding some way to take everything from them, potentially, if it benefited her, their lives. In this respect, I think that Louise Porton is an extremely dangerous predator who, in my humble opinion, is unlikely to ever be safe to be released. I just wanted to say something about this case. I read somewhere that concerns were raised to social services about Porton's parenting before the murders, but I have literally no information about what their involvement was, or the lack thereof. I'd be shocked, given her behaviour, that she didn't flag up on someone's radar. This is the sort of case I would expect to have been reviewed at a national level, and I'll keep an eye out in case there is a report. If I find out any more details, I'll do an update on this case. Anyway, please leave your thoughts below. You guys know how to support the channel, so please do if you want to. But I want to finish with a picture of the two beautiful girls who should be at the forefront of our minds and in our hearts. Lexi and Scarlet. May they rest in peace.